Hey guys, these days the demand for video is higher than ever. It's an unspoken requirement for advocacy and to move the needle on important legislation. I'm Jordan, and this is a Progress Now series, The Nonprofit Filmmaker. This series will give you the fundamentals to shoot high quality video no matter your budget. Fundamentals that apply whether you're using an iPhone, a DSLR, or a full cinema package. The next time you dive into your coffers to pay some expensive slick professional firm like Progress Now, think again. You have the tools to turn your nose up at elitist filmmakers such as myself and return the power to the proletariat. As they say, the best camera is the one that you have on you, so let's get started. What you really want is manual settings, and most ones can get you close to that without any fancy apps. Go into your camera app and set it to manual. They might be called, like, pro mode. It's probably buried in your settings somewhere. If you're on an iPhone, they don't really give you a way to do manual, but there's a bunch of apps, Filmic Pro being the best of them, but there's lots of free ones as well that I'll uh, link in the description. Ultimately, here's what you want to have control of. Your ISO, your shutter speed, focus, and white balance. That'll get you close to a DSLR, and it'll really let you start to experiment and follow along with the rest of this series. So why shouldn't you rely on the auto settings? Simply put, the average look is rarely the best one, and your phone will always take the safe route and balance between the brightest and the darkest spots. It's distracting to have changing light levels just because someone with a white shirt walked by in the background. Ultimately, it should be up to you what the final image looks like. So. ISO is a gain control on your exposure, so in really simple terms, ISO is how bright or how dark your video is. Every image has a dynamic range, which is the brightest thing to the darkest thing in your frame. Basically, your ISO is a slider of that dynamic range. So if it's bright and sunny, you lower your ISO. If it's dark, you raise it. Shutter speed, which also controls your exposure, but more importantly, controls how much motion blur you experience. Most of the time, you want your shutter speed to be twice your frame rate for a natural motion blur, aka 30 frames per second, your shutter speed should be something like 1 over 60. But once in a while, if it's too dark and you already cranked your ISO, you can lower your shutter speed to get more light, as long as you're okay with more blur, too. Or, if you have too much light and your ISO is already low, then you can increase the shutter speed and darken the image, and then there will be less motion blur. Um, you'll basically know what focus is, but now the camera isn't doing it for you, which is good news, because if you move around even a little bit while you talk, you don't want the autofocus searching the room for what to pay attention to. Take control of the focus. Even if it's just your tap to focus and it locks it there, the technology just isn't there for most phones to reliably track and not drop focus a few times during an interview. And white balance. It turns out the color of light changes depending on the source. You might see a slider or a large Kelvin value, capital K, that you can fill in. Degrees Kelvin is the color of the light. Don't worry if that's confusing, it is. The low numbers on your slider are between 2000 and 3000, are your standard soft white indoor bulbs. Fluorescent office lights are higher, around 4,000, and bright sunlight or daylight bulbs are on the upper range, 5,000 to 6,000. Low numbers are more orange, and higher numbers are more blue. The point is, match the white balance of the room that you're in. Outside will generally be 5,000 to 6,000, but right around sunrise, it might be closer to 2,000. And around sunset, it actually gets closer to 7,000 or 8,000. So just pay attention to the room that you're in. Okay, I don't want to load you with too much information right now, and well, this is meant to be a series, not a one-size-fits-all kind of situation, so this is a good start. Go and experiment with these new tools. It takes some practice to get comfortable and understand intuitively the relationship between different exposure controls. See you when I see you. Also, like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss our next one.